this video is going to be all about pushing trophies in Clash Royale. I always get tons of comments of people asking me, you know, how I push trophies faster or tons of questions about what I do to push trophies in Clash Royale. So I thought for today's video, I would give you guys five quick tips that you guys can use to push trophies faster in Clash Royale. Also, if you enjoy this video, be sure to subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. So my first major tip that I'm going to give to you guys is to be sure to study your replays. Let's say that you lose a match and you're really, really frustrated by that loss. Instead of pouting and whining about losing, what you should do is you should go and open that replay and study it. You should be sure to watch all of your losses and figure out what you did wrong that made you lose that match. This is something that not a lot of people do and it's something that I even neglect and something that I need to get a lot better at. But doing this can definitely set you apart part from the majority of players in Clash Royale. This is something that I know a lot of pro players in the Clash Royale community do, so if you do this, then maybe you can become the skill level of a pro. Just maybe though, no guarantees, okay? So this next tip is going to be my biggest and most important tip in this entire video, and it is all about over committing. So what you want to do is both on offense and defense equally, you never want to overcommit in Clash Royale. So you might be asking, well, what is overcommitting? Well, let me explain that to you. So overcommitting in Clash Royale is basically when you spend more elixir or play more cards than you actually need to in a situation. Let me give you an example of offensive overcommitting. Let's say that you play a giant and a musketeer at the bridge during the first play of the game. If your opponent has an Inferno Tower and say something else like bats, then that's a very easy defense for your opponent and they spent less elixir defending than you did attacking, which gives your opponent an advantage. Really, if it's the first play of the game, you don't need to rush and go all in. Since it's the first play of the game, you have plenty of time to figure out what your opponent is actually playing and then strategize on how you want to go about attacking them. So doing something that aggressive first play just really isn't necessary. Let me give you an example of overcommitting on defense because yes, it is possible to spend more elixir than you need to on defense. There is such a thing as being a safe on defense in Clash Royale, but there's also another thing of overcommitting too much on defense in Clash Royale. Being safe in defending in Clash Royale is okay, but you definitely don't want to spend too much elixir. So let me give you an example. Let's say that your opponent drops a Mega Knight at the bridge. Most people will overreact and get scared when they see a Mega Knight at the bridge, but really there's no need to fret. A simple three elixir knight can fully counter a Mega Knight. And going along with the example of the Mega Knight, there's so many other cards in Clash Royale that can counter the Mega Knight. Like a few of my favorite cards to use are the Valkyrie, the Dark Prince, and the Goblin Cage. Those are just three other examples, but over committing on defense, you don't want to do it. You want to be sure to learn micro interactions between cards, what cards can counter other cards, and that can lead to you not over committing on defense. I would go a little bit more in depth into this, but for the purposes of this video, I'm going to keep the over committing tip at just that. But if you guys want me to make a video specifically about micro interactions and over committing, be sure to let me know with a comment down below. My third tip is going to be to actually watch TV Royale. TV Royale is something that I feel like a lot of players players in Clash Royale neglect, and I really don't understand why. It's a super useful feature in the game. So what you're going to want to do is, of course, go to Legendary Arena, Arena 13, and you're going to want to look for some of the replays of the best players in the world. Like this first match right here, it's a Golem player versus another Golem player. They are both in the top 150 in the world. So you know it's going to be a good match because these players are of extremely high quality. So I definitely 100% recommend going through and watching these players and see how they play. I guarantee that by watching TV Royale, you'll see a lot of interactions between cards that you never would have seen anywhere else. And you can definitely learn a lot of things. And I mean, these players are just so good. Like we're going to take a look at Air Surf profile right now. Air Surfer is a literal pro player in Clash Royale who has played in the CRL before. Right now he is number 32 in the world. And look at this man's profile. Look at this absolutely insane profile. He's won over 112 win grand challenges. He's gotten 20 wins in the CRL challenge twice. He's played the game for four years. Of course he's gotten the ultimate champion. And one of his replays is just here to watch. Free. It's free for you to watch, for you to learn and absorb from. So this is a feature in the game I definitely think you should use. Tip number four is a little bit obvious, but it's still something that I've seen a lot of people not do. And that is to actually use cards that you have leveled up. Again, it may sound simple, but I've seen plenty of people not do this. The other day I was playing on ladder and I actually went up against a guy 
who was using a level 11 Inferno Dragon. I honestly have no idea how that guy got above 6,000 trophies, but let's just say that I three crowned him very gracefully. So you don't want to be like that guy using a level 11 Inferno Dragon. It's just not smart. And going along with this tip, I guess this is an extension of tip number four, but you're going to want to play a deck that you are actually comfortable with. You may want to do some testing, find out what your main play style is. You know, whether you like playing fast paced decks, spammy decks, slow paced decks, or control based decks, something like that. You want to find out what your play style is, build a deck based around that play style, and then focus on leveling up the cards of that deck. Again, I could make a whole nother video just about this tip. So if you guys want that, then let me know with a comment. And then the very last tip that I'm going to give you guys is to pay attention to the Clash Royale meta. This is another thing that I think is very overlooked, but you wanna make sure that you pay attention to what cards are good and what cards are bad in Clash Royale. Here is an example. Even though the Mother Witch is the freshest and newest card in Clash Royale, and she is a legendary card at that, she's really appealing to use, right? Because she also has a really cool mechanic that no other card in the game has. All those things make her extremely appealing, but she is a very weak card in Clash Royale, especially in this current meta. So I definitely do not advise using her. If you want to use a four elixir support card, then use the Hunter. The Hunter is one of the best cards in the game right now. So instead of using the Mother Witch, go use the Hunter. Or if you insist on using a Witch card, then use the Night Witch because she really is the only good Witch in Clash Royale. The regular Witch and the Mother Witch both aren't that good. In the description down below, I'm actually gonna leave a link to a website called RoyaleAPI.com. And this is the main website that I use to keep track of what cards are good and what cards are bad in Clash Royale. This is what Royale API actually looks like. And as you can see, it has every single card in Clash Royale. And we can look at the usage rate and the win rate of every single card. So you can see right now that the log has the highest usage rate in the game at 35 percent and at the very bottom of the usage percentage we can see that as i said the mother witch is right down there and you can see that her win rate is pretty bad as well so this is a very useful tool if you're ever curious of what cards are good and what cards are bad in clash royale then i definitely recommend using this website again there will be a link in the description if you guys want to check it out also a disclaimer i'm not affiliated with royale api or anything they're not paying me to shout them out or anything i just really enjoy their website it's a very good product and a very useful tool and so ladies and gentlemen those are five tips that i think will help you in terms of trophy pushing in clash royale if you enjoyed be sure to leave a like and also as i said earlier be sure to subscribe down below but anyway i'm gonna head out see you guys later